What I have here is the original Game Boy Advance and this little toolkit that I got, you can buy this at uh, Radio Shack. It's actually kind of pricey but um, you know it's capable of uh, repairing pretty much any small electronic device that you have, any sort of mobile device you have. Down here you can see all the different types of the uh, 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 bits that come with the package. There are I think six, no it's a 54-bit driver kit. Um, and as you can see, it's got. Uh, let me see if I can focus. There we go. You know, those are the different types of bits that you uh, you will uh, get with this kit. So inside, this is what it looks like. Let's see if I can zoom out. Not really zoom out, but raise this camera a bit. Okay. So here it is, and it's got a bunch of other stuff, and maybe I'll redo a re review on this kit later on, but right now, uh, we just need two bits from this set. It's the tri-wing bit, and a Phillips head. Okay, so in the back, we've got these... Uh, tri-wing uh, screws and when I open these what I like to do is I, I like to press the two halves together and what it does is it makes it uh, slightly easier to take the screws out And the tip is is magnetized, so um, you don't have to worry about the, the screws flying off uh, once they come out. So you can see there, it's magnetized. So I'm going to unscrew the rest of these off camera. And this one here is actually a Phillips head. I've removed all the screws, so there are six, one, two, three, and then uh, one, two, three, uh, six tri-wing screws and then there was that one Phillips head screw that uh, we uh, had to remove and to take this, well, yeah, once you undo this it's actually pretty easy to remove the back piece so I'm using you know basically just two fingers and kinda just lifting off and you can see how how easy that is um, let me go ahead and put it back on and just show you though if you wanna actually get one of these kits for yourself if you look um, at this number here, so right in there is the number 101-2 and that's going to tell us the uh, type of uh, con converter cable we're going to need and um, this is the cable and the connector um, once you open this up we're going to go ahead and remove the shoulder buttons Okay. Absolutely no force really needed to remove them. Okay. And last but not least, uh, go ahead and take out the power switch. Because this guy is so small, he's very likely to uh, get lost. Um, the motherboard itself is held to the front plate by one screw here and another screw right here on the uh, left side if you're staring from the back and those are Phillips heads so I'll go ahead and remove those okay so that screw there was removed and likewise with the one over here sometimes what you'll see is uh, on some of the, uh, the different uh, well it's still the original Game Boy Advance models but sometimes there might be a screw here okay and uh, you can tell which ones are supposed to hold the motherboard in, in, in place uh, by the uh, green ring around each of those holes okay so so as to not get confused with the uh, holes that hold the <coughs> two <coughs> excuse me two halves of the cases together All right now before we take this motherboard off what you want to do is you want to let me go ahead and zoom in you want to um, remove this cable so what that's going to require is for us to 
push this tab up on both sides, so that those brown tabs. Okay, just work it slowly. Uh, I'm just using my fingernail on my thumb to pry it open. This one's going to be kind of hard because there's this this little tab sticking out up front, but it's manageable. Okay, you don't need any hard force there. Now this part here might be a little difficult to remove. Okay, so what you could do is you can just kind of lightly nudge the cable out with a screwdriver and uh, I've got smaller screwdrivers that I could have used but uh, this is already on hand so I'll just go ahead and use the Phillips head okay so we've dislodged the cable from its connector let's go ahead and refocus okay now removing the motherboard then is just as simple as lifting it off and there we have it so there's our motherboard I'm gonna go ahead and put it off to the side um, uh, let me go ahead and note that see the uh, rubber piece there that's from those the, the AB buttons over here they kinda of stuck on it and that's okay um, I'll go over how to put them back properly um, you might also want to note that the rubber pieces attach to the the front plate here and here as well as here and this is to help uh, guide you when you put them back so that they fit properly and and I, I pulled the uh, rubber piece from the uh, motherboard and this is basically just going to sit in here so you, you can't really get this let me focus here you can't get this wrong because it can only fit really one way okay so if you try to put it in the wrong way you know it's not going to fit. Okay, so there's really only one way for that to go. So I'll keep the rubber pieces with the front plate, and let's go ahead and talk about how we would remove the screen. So the screen actually has a, a couple of layers. The top layer is this sort of uh, I don't know what you would call it, almost like a styrofoamy kind of. Uh, material if there's even such a word and it's um, it's glued on okay and all you have to do is just kind of lightly pull back on it and it'll come out okay so there's a metal frame right in here that holds the screen together okay so I've got my little prying tool here and what we're going to do is basically slide this underneath here okay in between there and attempt to lift it up by that metal piece so you can start to hear some of that glue and what you're seeing is, it is basically let's zoom out a little bit let me see if I can refocus here we are. So there's actually a, a rubber piece of rubber between the screen and the case. So at this point, I can just gently pry this open. Okay. We're actually going to remove not only the screen but that rubber piece as well. So just gently work the screen out and you might have a, a little bit of extra rubber sticking to it that's okay but this is what the screen looks like when we take it apart um, this rubber piece here we're actually going to now we're going to remove and we're not going to reuse and the reason for that is because um, it's just thick enough so that it will cause some uh, difficulty in putting the new screen in. So uh, what we're going to do after this is get our new screen. So I'm going to remove this piece here and let's go ahead and do that and just kind of place it on top of my old screen. So there we are. Okay. 
and it goes on kind of something like this. Okay, I'm not going to mess with this too much. And that's good enough for me. It's not on there perfectly, but whatever. Okay. Now, what you're going to want to do when you do your, uh, your upgrade is you're going to want to place the new LCD in here. It's not going to sit flush because, see, there's this ridge here as well as uh, a, a lower, slightly lower ridge here that we're going to have to shave off. In fact, uh, w this one right here is going to need to go as well. So, but what you don't want to do is you, wanna, you don't want to just completely cut out everything right now because uh, if you do it right, you can actually use part of the corners here uh, so that uh, you know to hold in the screen. And um, I'll go ahead and get that screen ready, and we will take a look at how to uh, cut this faceplate here so that it can accept the new screen. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take these guys out so that I don't lose them. And again, remember that they're they're actually pretty easy to put back into place. Before we do the modification for these uh, little ridges here, one of the things we're going to want to do so that we don't scratch up, and if you want to keep this lens, for example, then you're going to want to remove that before you start doing any sort of cutting so that you don't scratch the back side of this lens. And then when you put your screen in, it's going to show up as this sort of a bright, wet line across your screen. Um, so to do that, you basically just take your thumb and you know use a, sh uh, a towel or your shirt even, and you want to kind of just press lightly in the in this corner here, okay, um, or this corner. And what I like to do is I like to just kind of work my way around the edges. You don't need to press very hard; just just basically press out a little bit by a little bit, and keep going around the perimeter of the lens until eventually it's going to pop loose. So let me see if I can demonstrate that on camera. I'm just using my shirt. See, you can see there. Okay, just work it slowly. So you could hear it, and I'll, you know, here it is coming out. And, you know, it might not come off immediately, right away, but just be patient and just apply a little bit of pressure, and you can hear it come off slowly, okay? The plastic is pretty resilient, so... I. You know, I'm not afraid of applying a little more pressure every time, but again, you don't really need to have, you don't have to strong arm this so that it, you know, it will come off. Just be patient. And again, we're not in any rush. So, some patience will eventually pay off. And there we go. We have the front plate, that lens, is now off. And if you do it right, most of that sticky stuff will still be on this piece and you can actually you know, reuse that and put it right back on here uh, without any issue. Um, now to keep dust from collecting on this, I'm going to flip this over and put this uh, on top of uh, something clean. Okay, um, so just put it away, put it on top, make sure it's facing down so that dust doesn't collect on the, on the, the sticky material, the glue or the tape there. Okay, and we're now ready to address how to cut these pieces off.